We're at Biosphere 2 in Oracle, Arizona, just north of Tucson. Joining me is John Adams, Assistant Director. But John, can you give us a little bit of a background and overview of what the biosphere is? Right, well, many people maybe have heard about biosphere, and so it dates back to this time in the early 90s when eight people were sealed inside um, Biosphere 2, which covers a little over three acres. Um, they enclosed a number of different biological systems, and the, the primary objective was to see if these systems could balance the conditions inside to make it sustainable for these eight people to live for an extended period. They also wanted to capitalize on an understanding of how Earth systems work for potential mm -hmm. space travel. Um, more recently though, we've transitioned away from this original objective to one where we're using it as a large Earth Systems Laboratory. So this is really the first time the Earth Sciences have had a facility of this nature. And I like to make the analogy. So astronomers have had large telescope arrays. We put telescopes into space to mm -hmm. look to the end of the time. Um, you know, we built super colliders to understand what makes up an atom. Um, but the Earth Sciences have never had anything sort of equivalent on scale to that. Well, Biosphere now is that tool that we're using to address certain questions and how, for example, climate change is going to impact our lives. Now, inside the biosphere, there are four different um, specific biotypes. Right. And uh, recently, actually, the University of Arizona took over operations, maybe it was four yeah. or five years ago. So, yeah. so most recently, the, the University of Arizona, five years ago, uh, assumed ownership and, and, and managing Biosphere 2. And their mm -hmm. primary focus is to use the facility um, to address and try to under, better understand water. And we're doing that in, in certain areas inside Biosphere. So we've got an equatorial rainforest, mm -hmm. um, we've got an ocean system, we've got a savanna on the far end, we've got a desert. But in the area that we're focusing the greatest amount of attention and resources is in this, this former farm area. So Biosphere had, of the three acres, about a half acre was dedicated to agricultural farming inside. And more recently, we thought it would be better to repurpose this space to address and build three large hill slopes. And the mm -hmm. primary objective behind these hill slopes is to better understand how water moves over and through a landscape. Um, because we know as the climate changes, one of the things that's going to be most significantly impact is the resource of water. Absolutely. It's really becoming more and more an issue even where I live uh, and I'm sure here in Arizona. Well here in the Southwest, mm -hmm. you know, one of the resources that we're all dependent upon and we're all trying to scratch our heads is to, you know, how much is going to be available 10, 15, 20 years from now is water. And as we see land use changes, we, we're just not very good at predicting sort of how water is going to flow through and over this landscape. Ultimately, you know, how much is going to end up downstream for societal needs? Mm -hmm. This new experiment is going to allow our researchers to be able to gain some insight into the, some of these fundamental processes. Now another component of Biosphere is education and outreach. Yes, so the University of Arizona, just like Oklahoma State, is a land-grant institution. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our focus is to improve science literacy from a very specific objective here at Biosphere. So our lab is actually open. So most labs on campus you can't mm -hmm. walk into. Very most field private. sites you can't you can't go to because they're they're behind a lock gate or at a remote location. Biosphere is open and we encourage the public and we have over 100,000 visitors who come to our site every year and we have folks um, who take them through and explain the research that's going on and actually provide opportunities on occasion to interact with our researchers. So that's one thing that we do. The other thing is, is education and we do education from you know, people completing their doctoral degrees here all the way down to the K-12 through community um, and everything in between. Excellent. Well, certainly fulfilling that land grant mission but in such a very special, unique way. But I'm happy now we're going to take the opportunity to go visit with one of your research scientists. Great. Thank you very much for coming today. Thanks. Joining me is Joost van Haren, assistant professor at the University of Arizona and leading scientist here in the rainforest biome. Joost, tell me how working here in the biosphere helps you advance uh, the science of understanding the rainforest system. So there's three ways that we are trying to do this. One is Biosphere 2 is a, a glass house. So the atmosphere and the plants are all enclosed in the same area. And with that, we actually have a magnifying glass on how plants interact with the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. In part, on how they take carbon dioxide up out of the atmosphere for their photosynthesis and, and so forth, but also how through the production of gases like uh, volatile organic compounds, VOCs, how they affect the atmosphere and how they protect themselves from harmful agents like ozone uh, in the atmosphere. Absolutely. Number, and then, oh, number two, <laughs> I'm, I tend to talk long, I'm a scientist after all. <laughs> number two is that 
plants uh, and, and, and this rainforest, they function in their process normally like any other plants. Mm -hmm. And so what we can do with Biosphere 2 is do experiments in here that you can't do anywhere else in tropical forests. You can't do a temperature in the, in, in the real world because the trees are just too big. Normally people do that in grasses, like in Oklahoma on the grasslands. There you can yeah. do a temperature experiment. In the rainforest, in the Amazon basin, you can't do that. So you have to use something like Biosphere 2 to do the experimentation. Mm -hmm. Then you run models and see how they can mimic then the data collected at Biosphere 2. And then you use those models, the improved models, to then see what is the projection for the real world. How does that change? How did the parameters affect in Biosphere 2? to use to go to bucket the real world. And it only works because the same processes go on. The plants work the same way here as they do in the real world. And one of those big models and big questions you're looking at is climate change and how that's going to affect the rainforest, particularly drought. Exactly, and that, that is, so the, those, that's the, the, the big question, for, especially for the Amazon basin. We know we have deforestation. Honestly, we can't do a deforestation in the ex experiment here by Biosphere 2 because we will lose the forest. But what we really want to understand is what is the drought going to do? Because we know with El Nino events uh, that will increase with climate change, drought is the biggest pressure that the Amazon basin will see. And so together with the increased temperature, the increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And so we want to see, do experiments and see how drought is going to affect the plants. How are going to de de they do the, the photosynthesis? How does that work also with increased temperature, increased carbon dioxide? These kind of experiments we can do here, you can't do them nowhere else. And one of the beautiful things is some of the studies you found here, such as with your microbes, you're able to bring that out and kind of target once you get into the Amazon, what do we need to take a closer look exactly, at? Exactly, exactly. And that again comes back to the magnifying glass effect, right? Here we can see, observe things, how plants and the soils affect the atmosphere much faster and also what the, these interactions are. And, then, and that's also the, the idea. We can then take it to the real world because the Biosphere 2 by itself, it's a beautiful greenhouse, it's a, a, a great for experimentation, mm -hmm. but it's only to find certain things that we then can confirm happening in the real world. Well, it's a wonderful opportunity and a great tool. Thank you so much for Thank sharing you. the rainforest. Yeah. Wonderful. Glad to have you here.